Welcome to Hector. Hector? What's a Hector? Your new home. Whoa, hold the phone, lady. There was a moment in history where a lot of the cartoons that were coming out were a lot of darts being thrown at a dartboard to see what would stick, what would land, and what would be ultimately okay to show on TV. Spoiler alert, not a lot worked. The early 2000s produced a lot of interesting cartoons. We were in an era of popular shows getting a theatrical movie, but then we started to see the opposite. Like Jimmy Neutron that had a movie in theaters and then was continued on into a television show for Nickelodeon. Which nowadays, this isn't really a new concept. We basically see everything that DreamWorks makes has already some sort of cartoon continuation on Netflix in the works. <sighs> that was a sentence that was hard to get out. I'm gonna say two words. Osmosis and Jones. A movie that you might remember as this weird Bill Murray eating a gross egg fever dream or as a fun unique take on how your white blood cells and medicine help fight off germs and bacteria within your body. And I have some fond weird memories of this film but after not doing so well at the box office somehow Warner Bros greenlit a TV series to follow Ozzy and Drix on new adventures. Thus now we have Ozzy and Drix going on new adventures. Man that's pretty crazy how this stuff just writes itself sometimes. To the show's credit, it lasted two seasons and received mostly better reviews than the movie itself, which is what I see and personally feel about how Jimmy Neutron was received. While I love the original movie, there are some episodes of the show that I love and enjoy more than the film. Maybe that's the case here with Ozzy and Drix, because the movie received these mixed reviews so the show couldn't possibly have the hardest hurdles to leap over, right? With the first episode of the show, we catch up with Ozzy and Drix dealing with a situation inside of Frank, who was the person they were inside of from the original film. And due to them chasing a disease known as the Scarlet Fever, voiced by Tim Curry, they end up getting transferred from Frank to Hector. Gross. Hector is a young teen on the cusp of maturing. The major difference being that Frank was an unkept, germ-ridden slob that most time felt like there was no helping him. Even if Ozzy and Drix were on the case. Hector was, well, kind of a clean slate. And as Osmosis Jones himself puts it, I seen the photos in Frank's memory banks. The guy used to be in good shape. What happened? Fast food, late nights, smoking. It all started going downhill around this age. We can do a lot more good here. I mean, 13's a scary age. Hector's gonna need somebody who's been around the block a few times. Somebody who can help him through these changes and keep him healthy. So there's a legit chance here to help out Hector to stop early on from having bad eating habits, smoking, and, well, overall personal hygiene. So both Ozzy and Drix decide, sure, F it, let's help make sure Hector has a fighting chance early on not to go down the same path as Frank did. And there we have the basic premise of the show. Osmosis Jones and Drix are now part of Hector's immune system. I really like this. I think to have the top defenders of sickness join a new crew within a new host dealing with new and more interesting situations than eating a disgusting egg, oh, Hold on, I think I need a minute. It still makes me gag. <coughs> I like all of what the show had to offer. It felt more interesting to see what new situations a younger, healthier person could offer the dynamic duo. I mean, seriously, Frank was a lost cause. He was absolutely disgusting. He, he ate the egg. Oh, he ate the egg. He ate the egg. Hey, Bill huh. Murray. Okay. Don't you put that dirty wow. egg up in your mouth. I'm gonna put it in my mouth. Don't you put that dirty fucking egg the show never really had that big moment of relevance, as it is easy to get lost in the shuffle of Mucha Lucha, Yu-Gi-Oh, Static Shock, Cubics, and oh yeah, Pokemon. I mean, it even got overshadowed on its premiere episode coming out alongside What's New Scooby-Doo? What is new Scooby-Doo? I don't know, you're still solving mysteries, guess it can't be that new. A pup named Scooby-Doo is better, there I said it, you cowards. A pup named Me! You're on me, get off me! So I wouldn't be surprised if the majority of you at all barely remember this show. I'm sure it at least sparked a vague memory of it, or at least remembering the film itself, but I bet you couldn't name an episode of the show. And I grew up watching all the shows I listed on Fridays and Saturdays, and because of my captured attention of the other shows, Ozzy and Drix became sort of lost in the mix. I mean, I never really forgot it, I just didn't fully remember it. It was like a memory that's stuck in the back of my brain that rears its head now and then to make me go, oh yeah, Ozzy and Drix existed. So even though it isn't the first show you remember from that time, what made it special enough to be remembered at all? It was still a fairly competently made show. The animation wasn't lazy and it was comparable to anything else on Kids WB at the time. I think something that was impressive was that the show always had unique character designs since most of the show was different cells, germs, 
<laughs> Giant cold pill. Unhand my partner, you <laughs> Everyone kind of had their own identity. I mean, even background characters and secondary characters always had their own looks as well. I mean, Ozzy and Trix themselves are extremely fleshed out here. Now, sure, they play into the same characteristics of the film, just now a bit more of their personality shines through. Osmosis Jones is this over-charismatic, too big for his britches private eye, who is at most times too cocky for his own good and constantly trying to prove how good he is at his job to his peers. You're talking to Osmosis Jones here, white blood cell, police legend, and number one germinator from the city of Frank. Drix is, well, just a fun-loving sweetheart who wants nothing more than to be a beacon of good who can be a little naive sometimes. Now let's preface this. Do I think you'll be able to pass any test on the human anatomy or your immune system or any other medical school test because of watching this show? No, of, of course not. But what the show did do was effectively kind of show how germs or other situations would happen and enter you and how it would affect your insides and how your white blood cells and your immune system would fight it off to keep you good and healthy in an exaggerated way, obviously, but at least in a way that was effectively entertaining and educational. Plenty of times they would even reference and mention more obscure issues as to not make the show feel like it's stale or redoing the same narrative over and over and over again. Heck, in one episode they even mention, Float like a butterfly, sting like hepatitis B. What I think was really interesting was the episode, Where's the Smoke, which would be equivalent to your basic, hey, smoking is bad PSA episode. But at this point in the early 2000s, a lot of the shows that would have a lot of these PSAs about not smoking, don't do drugs, kind of phased out at this point. That was more of like an 80s and 90s kind of thing you would see here and there to be like, hey kids, we know you like this program. Also, don't touch a cigarette, are you stupid? So to see it still kind of carry over into the 2000s was kind of interesting. And, you know, I guess still a good message. <laughs> So yeah, I guess you could say I was still kind of in shock to see an episode like this still being made. And in this episode, we see Hector trying to fit in with the cool kids at school who hasn't been there, in which he gets peer pressured into trying a puff of a cigarette. That causes Nick O'Teen, yes, you heard that right, Nick O'Teen, to be the representation inside Hector's body of what smoking can do to your insides and how the addiction can take place. Maybe it was media like Honey, I Shrunk the Kids or the Magic School Bus, but for some reason, I really liked the concept of a micro world within our world. A smaller look at everything, whether it's based in reality or a fantastical concept. Does that make me weird? I don't know what it is, but growing up, I thought it was so cool to see how your insides work through the guise of cartoons. So whatever weird reasoning I like stuff like that, this show played right into my enjoyment of it. In season two, it tackled puberty as Hector has an increase of testosterone, leading to a new gang of some rowdy teenage hormone troublemakers resulting in the changing of attitude inside Hector's brain, causing him to be a little bit, uh, rebellious. Rebellious. And of course, we had all the pun-based titles and characters galore, as you can imagine, as we've already talked about. Nick O'Teen. So there were other characters like Antihistamine. Yes, like Antihistamine. And like I mentioned, the show lasted for two seasons, ending with the episode Journey to the Center of the Tooth, where the escaped General Malaise tries to take over one of Hector's tooth, resulting in him having major tooth pain. And trust me, that's my nightmare. Tooth pain can be the worst and dentists are scary. That's, that's just a fact. I'm not even, that's not even a joke. That's just real. That's just honest truth. I don't trust y'all. Get your sharp things out of my mouth. I don't want them there. <laughs> and while this episode does conclude in, you know, Ozzy and Drix saving the day, it just kind of ends the series. There's no continuation. It's just the end. <laughs> Jones. <laughs> Oh, you're serious. And after that, this IP has stood dormant. No movie sequel, no show continuation or reboot, nothing. Sometimes things run their course, and maybe that's just the case here. But I think there are enough interesting stories to tell if a comeback was ever in the works. I highly doubt that would happen, and again, lower ratings in the second season really hurt any chances of any more. But either way, I had a lot of fun revisiting this show, and based off of vague memory, I would love to see somehow more of this show. Because I genuinely enjoy my time revisiting Ozzy and Drix. I mean, hey, it was popular enough at one point to at least get its own Game Boy Advance game. Oh god, that says Midway, doesn't it? Oh no, I hate this so much. I hate Ozzy and Drix, a 3D side-scrolling platformer disease brawler based on the show. Ozzy and Drix. Yeah, I know. Again, this is all super complicated. It's very hard to follow along, but please. 
Try your best. The game has you fight the show's rogues gallery of germs and diseases as they plot to take you both down for good and overrun Hector. The game reviewed poorly and was cited for having very bad controls. Shocking. Would not have seen that coming. At all. Who would have thought? Yeah, Ozzy and Drix really didn't have a chance at being a beloved franchise. It's pretty unfortunate as I do think there are some great takeaways from a show like this, aside from appeasing my interest in the small verse. Yeah, so overall, Ozzy and Drix was an inoffensive show that fought for existence in a time where there were so many new shows popping up that it was hard to stand out from the crowd. There's someone in the crowd. Emma, shut up. Not only that, it was also the continuation of a movie that didn't perform to the studio's expectations. This show had everything going against it for it to fully succeed, and hey, two seasons though was nothing to shake a stick at. Despite all the odds against it, the show produced 26 episodes. Only thing is, over time, and especially season two, the show's ratings started to plummet, resulting in the show's cancellation, and since then, the end of the Osmosis Jones IP. I do still really enjoy the concept, and I think that it could still work today with some new fresh writers and ideas, and something to give it a brand new coat of paint. Whether that's another movie or a new take on the TV show, either way, I would love to see a comeback for the germ fighting duo. Or maybe all this was just a fever dream and it's all just one big tough pill to swallow. No more Mr. Ice Guy! <laughs> But what do you think? Do you even remember this show? Do you think it even deserves any sort of comeback if that were to happen? Let me know all that stuff in the comments down below. As always, I do appreciate you checking out this video. If you enjoyed it, hit that like button, press subscribe, and hit the bell next to it so you get notified when I upload next. It truly means a lot to me and it helps out so, so much. Again, thank you for watching and I'll catch you on the next one. Goodbye. Mmm, that was sure delicious.